Welcome to Downey Live. Today we're driving a vintage streetcar here at the Nelson Electric Tramway Society and uh, it starts right now. This is the historic streetcar number 23, running in the summer for tourists and locals alike along two kilometers of lakeside track that connects the city wharf area to the lakeside park here in Nelson, British Columbia. But what makes this streetcar even more impressive is the fact that it first ran here in Nelson back in 1924, and it's still here running almost 100 years later. We're not just going for a ride on this classic streetcar, they're putting us to work, clearing the tracks, and showing us everything it takes to run, maintain, and operate a 114-year-old streetcar. Look out, folks, we're coming through. I'm Michael, traveling with my sister Jess around our home province of British Columbia to find some of the hidden gems and a glimpse of the proud railway history this province holds. Now, before we bring the streetcar out, the first job of the day is to clear the track. We're heading out in a speeder, which is essentially a little work train that is used to make sure there is no debris or obstructions on the track. So when they're running the speeder forwards, you drop these pads onto the rails to clear any debris off before the wheels go over. And on the back, they have this blower, which goes into these tubes, comes down, and it blows any debris off of the tracks as well. So they're, they're kind of double cleaning as they pass along. It's a great example of work smarter, not harder. That's a good lesson, kids. So while we're out here on the track, I might as well fill you in on the route that the streetcar takes. This two kilometer stretch of track runs from the Lakeside Park through the Save On Foods parking lot and ending at the prestige Lakeside Resort, which just so happens to be where Jess and I are staying tonight. There's our hotel. How perfect is it? that the hotel we're staying at is right at the station of the train we're here to see. That was a nice surprise. Yeah. Oh. Didn't have to go hunting around for it. No. Chocolate? Yes, please. From our last train stay. Yeah. Cheers. If you're new to the channel, the chocolate we're eating is from last week's video where we stayed in a luxury rail car, also owned by the Prestige Hotels, but in Cranbrook at their Prestige Rocky Mountain like. Resort. It was milk chocolate and caramel, his favorite. Delicious chocolate. It was a beautiful, stunning train. Wow! <laughs> oh, I'm Mike. I'm Jess. And this is my sister Jess. And we're currently traveling around our home province of British Columbia. Due to COVID, can't travel internationally. So we're exploring some of the more unique and adventurous and train related things and places. So the car was uh, built in 1906 in Cleveland, came to Nelson in 1924, where it went into operation as one of three cars, the smallest system in the British Empire at the time. The city originally had three streetcars named one, two, and three, this one being number three, but they were later renamed 21, 22, and 23 to make the fleet seem bigger. Car 23 remained in service here in Nelson until 1949 when the streetcar was replaced by buses. They actually have two streetcars here. The second one sits at the back of the car barn and was originally operated in Victoria, British Columbia and was designed as a multi-directional tram. So it has an operator's booth at both ends, meaning the streetcar doesn't need a loop, but it can just go back and forth along a single line. There you go. Wow. But the best part is the passenger seats can flip the other way when you change direction. So the passengers are always facing forwards. Not only is there a whole museum in here. Is this an old switchboard? The original switchboard in Nelson. This was the original yes. Nelson switchboard. Wow. And Greyhound Canada was started here in Nelson. So we've got a whole display on that. This is a picture of Charlie oh. when he was 16. Oh my gosh. Yeah, don't let us disturb you, but I hear yeah. you have some stuff. You were an original mechanic on this back in 1940. Yeah, 43. Oh, wow. wow. And yeah. if anybody knows anything about the yeah. streetcar, yeah. we rely on Charlie. This car was a spare car all the time before. We had two others we ran study. Right. Yeah. It, so this was the backup? Yeah, well, this is the backup car all the time. And now it's the number one? Yeah, it's the number one now. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you? Yeah, well, I just want to that. <laughs> okay, before we hop on the train, let's check in. Very fancy. Oh, wow. Woo! Whoa! Wow! Whoa! What? Whoa! What? Holy! What? What? <laughs> This is stunning! Whoa! 
<laughs> so if you watched last week's video, you know that we stayed in a luxury rail car, and I said it was the fanciest hotel room I've ever been in. Oh Jess, is... listen to her. <laughs> Look at this. This bed, Jess. Yeah. This is this is bigger than your apartment. <laughs> I have a very cute apartment. You have a fantastic apartment. <laughs> oh, look at that. Fantastic view of the lake. And the, uh, the tram runs right here along the side of the lake. Breakfast bars and two bars of chocolate. Ooh. Wow. Now let's go see a vintage electric tram. It gets better. I ran into two people I know. It's Jack and Grace. Yeah. Grace, are, Grace, are you excited? Yeah, me! Yeah. I am famous! <laughs> so it's uh, been a, a warming hut for skating at the lake. It's been kennels for dogs and cats. No way! And then it was restored by a group of volunteers and students at Selkirk College in the 1980s. Example, the, the trucks under the car came from Brussels. Oh, the wow. controller and uh, compressor came from Edmonton. The vestibule ceiling is all original from 1906, but the rest has been repaired by volunteers and students at nearby Selkirk College. I mean, the interior was redone by the woodworking department. Talk about a class project. It's great that the whole town came together to donate money, time, and expertise to refurbish the streetcar. But everyone forgets about the regular maintenance that is required when running your own small railway. So as an independent railway, the volunteers have to do all of the maintenance themselves. So these are the rail ties that they put in every season to repair the track and make sure it's even and smooth for all of us. There's no owner's manual on how to repair or maintain the streetcar. The closest thing they have to a manual is Charlie and all the information gets passed down from one volunteer to the next. Yeah, you heard that right. It's 100% volunteer run. All proceeds to keep the tram running come from donations and fares from passengers. So what I wanna know is, how do you drive this thing? This is the, it's the, called the controller key. Okay. And Thank so this, this enables the power. This is the, the controller. And so we're just set to two, not just two. Right. It used to be up to seven wow. to get up the hill. Two points. And so then this is the air brakes and the handbrake. And this is our gong. So ah. that's how we communicate with the conductor. That's right. Yeah. And then this is the air horn. So if somebody doesn't get out of my way. Ah, <laughs> that's the fun button. That's right. <laughs> and so this is the substation. The substation, yeah. Power from the city, Nelson Hydro, uh, 480 volts alternating current. Okay. And it's fit into the substation here. 1899. Wow. On the, on the ammeter there. The last patent on that is 1939. So there's no reason not to assume that this was on the original street railway system here when it started because sure. it started in 1899. Same and uh, all of the switch gear and this was found in the uh, basement of the old uh, substation that used to supply the wow. streetcars. So Stand by for big noise. Okay. <laughs> We're going to Pretend the, the, the switch is tripped here. You can see the red light is on here? Yeah. And we got the power on, right? Yes. That's sort of counterintuitive, right? Right. This is set up for the people working on the equipment here. Okay. Red light don't work in there because there's 600 ah, volts. Ah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Safety. So, yeah, so here we'll, we'll uh, trip the switch. So this is spring loaded, so we just put this over to close. Wow, you can physically hear it move. But you see, there's only one wire up there, not like the trolley buses in uh, right, Vancouver. So the second wire is the ah. return is the rails. Right around here somewhere, there's a great big cable that runs back into the substation. Oh. So it completes the circuit eh, from here, through the streetcar, through the rails, and, and back to the substation again. Yeah, they had it all figured out in 1900. <laughs> it still works. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Uh, this is Jim, and I hear you're the president of the society. I'm the president, I'm the secretary treasurer, and most importantly, I make the coffee on Tuesdays and Thursdays <laughs> for the guys. So that's the day that's, everyone... That's my should, most important job. That is, and that's the day everyone seems to show up, I yep, hear. Yep. Looking at this streetcar from the outside, 
and it's easy to just see it as a cute little tourist tram that runs in the summer. It's not the fastest, the oldest, or the biggest streetcar system in the world, but that's what makes it so incredible. It's a moving, working museum. It's part of Nelson's history. If we don't look after this thing, it could disappear forever. It almost did. Number 23 lived its life as a working tram and then just sat and rotted outdoors, being used as a warming hut and as a kennel for cats and dogs. And after all that, when it was surely meant to be scrapped, it was rescued and brought back to life. But not by one person, by a whole town's worth of donors and skilled tradespeople to turn it into a piece of pride. This tram was a class project for students at Selkirk College. It's a summer job for retirees, a social club for volunteers, a reminder of the past and a point of interest for our future. Of the tram, what did you think of the ride? Good! I liked it so much. I want to go there all over. All right. Again. You want to do it again? Yes. You could tell that the community has a great respect for this tram. Whenever the tram's coming, everyone stops, gives it lots of distance. They, they all wave. They, they all wave. They really enjoy seeing these guys work on the, the tram. Yeah. So it's nice to see how the community just truly respects this trolley. It's love. And I think. <laughs> if there's anything I learned from them here, it's that if we all come together, we can truly make something special. 2020 has been a tough year on everyone. So whether you're a welder or a web developer, try to volunteer this year because we can all use a little help. Perfect. <sighs> you're <that>. hired. <laughs> and just like Thanks that, a ride along the Nelson Electric <laughs> Tramway is over. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, this fantastic piece of history. Thanks for keeping it alive. And after a long day of keeping tourists happy, it's time to put her to bed. And there you have it. Parked, safe and sound, put away. That is the Nelson Electric Tram Society. It's a fantastic, beautiful old car. And if you're ever in Nelson, British Columbia, you need to come check it out. It's by donation. I'm Michael. The channel is Downey Live. Adventure travel, trains, all of the good stuff. And I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. See ya.